hit and record and we're ready. All right, students, I have a special guest today that I'm super excited about. This is Miss Morgan Green, and for those of you who don't know, she's actually a Sandberg grad, but she is rocking it in post-Sandberg world. If you look her up on LinkedIn, she has a plethora of experiences. She's going into some great things like mechanical engineering, but her journey in general, I'm super excited to hear about. So Morgan, thank you for joining us. Of course. Yeah. And if you don't mind, would you just kind of start a little bit, maybe with a background about who you are and what exactly, uh, where in college are you currently, and what is your kind of main end goal for all of this journey? Of course. So I graduated from Sandberg in 2017, and I am at St. Mary's College in South Bend, Indiana, and the University of Notre Dame right now. So I chose St. Mary's. I was in between St. Mary's and Purdue when I was looking at colleges for engineering. And I like St. Mary's because they have a four-in-one program where you get two degrees in five years. And so I really wanted to keep with math and science when I was going into college. So I chose St. Mary's to major in math and the University of Notre Dame to do mechanical engineering. And I haven't regretted my decision. I really like it. I've always liked to know my professor. So I picked a school where the class sizes are small. At St. Mary's, my biggest class has been, size has been about 28 and the smallest was nine. So I really like to have that small class size. A lot of people were shocked when I came from a big high school because a lot of the girls were coming from high schools of 200 students to 12. Wow. So it was a big adjustment, but I really liked it. Notre Dame, I love it because I do get that big atmosphere at the same time. So I get the best of both worlds, a lot of people like to say. I have stayed being involved in college at St. Mary's, I'm on class council. So I just got elected to vice president for the our class. Well, congratulations. So exciting. We plan. Thank you. We plan parents weekends and events throughout the year. Cool. And then at Notre Dame, I'm involved in Society of Women in Engineering. So that's a really good opportunity for students to see what there is. And just a lot of girls supporting one another. And there's talks that come in about saying how women sometimes don't apply to stuff because they're like, oh, I don't... Um, I do not hit all those check marks when I'm applying for a job or an internship, but the best thing they say is just try, and the worst thing you get is a no. Right. So stuff like that's really helpful in college. I'm involved in Ronald McDonald, so we get a little bit of community service at school. And then I joined Sailing Club for the heck of it one day. My friend and I were walking, and we saw some boats out on the lake, and we're like, why not? So there's stuff like that where it's fun to join in college that gets you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Now you were mentioning that you had a, you had a two and a, a four and one kind of thing with five years of school and forgive me, but so your majors are going to be eventually math and mechanical engineering. So yes, my major at St. Mary's, the way they did it is you choose a STEM major. So you could choose biology, chemistry, physics, or math. Okay. And coming into college, I was ahead in math. So I thought that would be the best fit for me. I really enjoyed math. So two more math classes until I finish that degree. And then I've always liked mechanical engineering in the aspect where it's very broad and you can do a lot with it, whether you want to go into cars, whether you want to go into the industry with consulting, whether you want to go into the medical field. And I'm trying to go down the avenue with the medical field. So I like that it gives you a lot of diversity in that aspect. Cool. Now I've noticed that you obviously have always been involved in, forgive me, I've actually never had you as a student, but I knew who I know, you were. I know, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I just knew, I just I knew who you were Holland. being involved in school in that, and you did. You had this confidence and this, you were plugged in to the Sandberg family, obviously, and that doesn't surprise me that you've plugged in now to your college family as well. Do you feel that's an important thing as far as experience, or is that just something that you enjoy? I think it's important and I enjoy it as well. I like to know the people that or the teachers that are teaching my classes or where I'm getting my education from. I've never been shy. I think I like to talk to people and that's just an aspect about me. But I think it's important to get involved for sure because it gives you a balance. Because if you're not getting involved, you just kind of go to school, you come home, eat dinner. And it yeah. gives you that opportunity to have a different schedule every day because one day I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go to this club or one day I'll do this. And so I always like being involved. Awesome. And I think too, yeah. you're building up probably a natural network, getting to know people from different mm -hmm. avenues that you never know could one day help you or you could help them too, which is a pretty cool experience. Yes. 
and they do give the career fair at Notre Dame and St. Mary's, so that's helpful to meet a lot of companies and recruiters in order to make those connections. Awesome. So to backtrack slightly, when you were going into college, obviously this draw of the personal school of St. Mary's and then the tie to Notre Dame as well, that is the best of mm -hmm. both worlds, it sounds like. Um, was that mm -hmm. always the objective to go into mechanical engineering for you? Well, going into college, I applied to a lot of schools. I applied to 13 schools. And so I was in between business and engineering because I like the social aspect of business because sometimes a lot of people said, oh, engineering, you just kind of sit there and you do your work, but it's not the case. So I realized it's better to go from engineering to business opposed to business to engineering if that's where you're unsure of. Okay. But I applied for schools, whether they were good business programs or good engineering programs. And then in the end, I decided that engineering was what I wanted to go with. So that's why I was down to Purdue, which is a great engineering program, but it's very, what I've heard is sometimes it's cutthroat or it's very competitive, which is totally fine and that's the world we're living in. But I liked that St. Mary's, you had that small class size in order to have that one-on-one -on -one and not to feel like you were just a number. Yeah, that makes so that's total why sense. I really liked it. And I feel like I had that at Sandberg even because you had opportunities to go one-on-one -on -one with your teachers or in advisory and that kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed that. And I really like the tradition that's at St. Mary's in Notre Dame. So that's why I chose there. Awesome. It sounds like a great fit and that thrills us, you know, the, the transfer from Sandberg to college and that it's going well. Uh, congrats on that. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. Looking on LinkedIn, I've noticed that you have a, a plethora of experience with different internships in that. For me, I geeked out when I saw Argonne National Lab. I live 10 minutes yeah. away from there, first of all, and I'm okay. just in awe and everything that goes on behind that fence. But could you kind of explain a little bit about your internship journey? What, what, what do internships really do for you? And maybe how do you go about it? Is it just a random email and you're begging? Or is it something you apply for? Just a little bit about that journey, I think would shed a lot of light for my students. Of course. So I applied for a lot of internships in college. I mean, honestly, the best thing to do is apply to what you're interested in. And if you get a yes, that's great. If not, it's a lesson learned. You learn the process. So I applied to companies like Eli Lilly, Stryker, medical companies, and then I applied to the research side, so Argonne National Lab. And so that was an application process. You had to get letter of rec, so you had to write some essays, fill out some things by a certain date, and then you wait until you hear back. So last summer I worked there under the civil engineering position. So mm -hmm. they only, ha this summer they have about 370 students. So they have to find places for everyone. So since it was my first year, I kind of was in the civil engineering department. So I still learned a lot. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted, but I still got to see a lot of the lab because I asked a lot of questions and I would say, oh, can I go to that building today? And you'd say, sure, go ahead. So that was fun. But you go through an orientation with all the students. They set up a lot of great opportunities. One weekend, we went to Northwestern to see the grad school and meet some people in engineering there to open your eyes to possible grad school if you're interested in that. They had a lot of different opportunities. We had a poster session at the end of the summer where everyone displayed what they did on a poster and people walked around from the lab and asked you questions. So it was a great opportunity. But this summer I was super excited because I got the position I wanted with mechanical engineering. Okay. Then all of this stuff happened with the coronavirus. Yeah. But we're still continuing it virtually. So it's still a great opportunity. I'm really excited. But we're working on they're known for the advanced photon source. Mm -hmm. And so I'm working with a mechanical engineer in that department. They're upgrading the um, beam line right now. So we'll be working with thermal analysis and doing some coding and some research along those lines. I'm really excited to get my feet wet in mechanical engineering. Yeah, I'm wow. Excited. That, uh, sorry again, the COVID-19, that, that's been coming up for everybody. It's just a unique situation that in the history books will be there, you know, 100 years from now, people will be talking about this strange time that happened to us. But I heard a lot of things that I'm not surprised you said, you being uh, confident that you are, you asked a lot of questions, you weren't afraid to branch out a little bit. And you know, hey, can I check this out or that? I think a lot of people, it, it takes a lot of time to be confident enough to push a little bit and try to learn as much as you can. And I also like that you mentioned that even though civil engineering wasn't your first choice, you did gain a lot of knowledge and information, if anything, an appreciation for a field. And important, I try to tell my students uh, that, 
you may find out that you dislike something and that's super valuable to know what you do and don't like when you are eventually choosing a career. So not saying you disliked exactly. it, but, but I just think that experience no. is, is so valuable. And again, you're meeting all these people in the field that you never know may be able to help you one day too. Well, exactly. So my mentor, we had a great time together, but he was a little, he felt sad because I'm in mechanical engineering. So he tried to introduce me to people at the lab. And we we're going around a uh, tour of a building one day and they have these glove boxes they do the chemical experiments in. And I was like, oh gosh, I'd love to get my hands in those. And so I asked the lady giving the tour and she's like, no, like, I don't think so. And then this man walked by Max and he was like, oh, do you want to put your hands in the glove box? And I was like, can I? And so then he let me and he was going to be my mentor this summer. So it was that one simple connection that right. he was like, if you're interested next summer, let me know. And so I have a different mentor this summer, but still it's small little interactions like that, that can give you a great opportunity. Yeah, it's hard to ignore when people are passionate and they obviously showed that and they're like, yeah, yeah, we can help you. And I've been in Argon before on one of those um, women in technology days and brought some of my students. And it was mm -hmm. just amazing that how open they were. If you were hungry for knowledge, they were happy to share their information. And I thought, what a great working environment. So that's a, that's a really mm -hmm. cool thing. I did notice too, you worked with a construction company you were interested, it's me mentioned about just seeing an entire something being built from top to bottom. Could you talk a little bit about that experience? Yes, so I was a freshman and it was through a family contact that I was trying to find an internship and I know it's hard freshman year, but I still wanted to do something and not just work a summer job. And so I was set up with a construction management company and I worked in estimating, so it was math related. So we would get plans of how they were going to build a building or a house or whatever it was and you'd have to calculate how much would this door cost in this unit and blah 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 but then I kind of got bored of the office and so I wanted to see the construction site so they started bringing me out on the site and that was very cool to see because even when you're going down the grange and you see the construction you're like oh god but honestly the amount of time and work that goes into it some people don't understand and so seeing the process happen in front of me or submitting a bid to get a project, that was very interesting. So that was just another part of my story, but it was interesting to see. Yeah. And how well-rounded you're becoming, even though you're, you're, you know, your passion would be in mechanical engineering, but now you've seen the civil engineering side, you've seen construction, not only that, but the money, the management, everything. That's just, again, just an arsenal of information that will never hurt you, will only benefit you. So I really hope that students are seeing that, that getting out there and experience, I think is so much greater than I could ever give them as a lecture at a whiteboard. You know no. what I mean? Get out there and get but, your hands dirty and ask questions. And my biggest thing I've learned in college, even with professors, with classes, is the biggest thing is you could just ask. And if you get a no, you say, okay, thank you. And that's it. But at least you know you asked, you know? Yeah. Even if you got points marked off on a lab report, I still go and ask and I say, why did this get reduced or taken off because of blah, blah, blah. And sometimes I'll get points back by simply asking. And if I didn't, I would kept that score. So there's stuff like that where you learn. Yeah, you're advocating for yourself. Speaking of which, if you don't mind me asking, it's a hot topic in the world. But when you're in your mechanical engineering classes, do you feel like there's mm -hmm. an equal vibe of 50-50 male, female? Do you feel like you're overwhelmingly uh, surrounded by males when you're out in the field or in the classroom? I would say it's growing going to an all girls school and then going to a co-ed school on certain days is a total different aspect. But I would say in one of my classes, I believe it was 32 students and only eight were girls. Okay. So sometimes it's a totally different dynamic depending on the major. There are more girls for sure, but I grew up having a lot of guy friends. So it's nothing weird for me. Sometimes guys could be a little entitled. No offense. Yeah, no, we understand. There's certain people that sometimes they're a little rude, but I just learned to have a good head on your shoulders and if they're doing the work I can do the work too so sometimes no, think, it's a little split but I know. think that's great to hear too because we know as teachers we're always trying to push you know equality and that it is you know even how women are paid is still unequal which is absurd mm -hmm. in 2020 but uh, it is always good to hear from the female's point of view I take for granted being a white male growing up in suburbia I have all the privilege in the world and sometimes I don't take into account how it might feel to be someone who isn't uh, the majority. And so that's great to hear from you being a confident woman. How do you deal with that? But I think you, you hit that on the head. You know, you, you, anything you. anyone can do, you can do just as good, if not better. 
And I've learned with engineering, you have to be smart and driven, but it's more necessarily you have to want it. A lot of people sometimes they're lazy and I've realized I'll never be the smartest person in the room, but I'll be the hardest working person in the room. And I think that's the most important thing. No, you have a, to want it. It's a great point too. Yeah. And if you're passionate about it, it's more natural to want it and push. So that's, that's fantastic. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. If you don't mind, can I squeeze in one more no, question? No, go ahead. With I'm mechanical free. engineering in that, what, what is then, as you said, you were finishing up your junior year now at? St. Mary's, yeah. St. Mary's. And then I'll be finishing my sophomore year at Notre Dame. Okay, cool. That's right, because the, the four and one. That's a really cool program, by the way. I hope students caught on to that and look into that. The fact that in five years you can get two degrees from two awesome schools is a, a phenomenal opportunity. And I wonder if there's other programs like that through other schools, too. There are. We have some other sister schools on the East Coast that works with Notre Dame, but a lot of recruiters have noticed why you're getting two degrees in medicine up to them. So that's an advantage, I would say. Yeah, ab absolutely. So once you're done with everything and uh, all said and done, is there some type of dream job or goal you're looking for in a specific field that you hope to one day have the opportunity to do? Yes. So I've always liked the medical field. I've always gotten chills going into a hospital. I know some people don't get that because there's a sad aspect, but I think there's so much technology and innovation that can happen in a hospital so I'd really like to be um, involved in medical instrumentation or more of the biomechanic side and create the devices they use for surgeries so I really would like to be in that field but I'll never know I mean sometimes things can change right but that's where I kind of see myself yeah and depending on you could meet one person randomly that could change your entire path because you find passion in some new field. You just never know. But with that being said, as a mechanical engineer, say you were going to create that robotic surgery instrument, would a mechanical engineer be the one that's designing the, the, the metal that goes around it, the coding? What would a mechanical engineer specifically do for that project? So I just finished a class this semester, actually, it's called Design Tools. And so it's a 3D modeling software called SolidWorks. And okay. so that's where you create the model of what you're trying to create. And then you go into the design and intent and all of that where you're creating it. So that's where the engineer kind of comes into place where you can be creative. And then it's trial and error. And you see what works, what doesn't, size, application, material. So that's where it comes into play. And then so you could go into the hospital or wherever and show them how to use the device you created. Mm. And mechanical engineers would be doing all those parts. The, yeah. So anything from, part. so skills include not just math problem solving, grit problem solving, getting through, but I, I would say is coding starting to overlap with your field? Yes. I've taken a couple coding classes. Coding is more dominant in computer science. Right. But I've picked up a couple coding skills. If students are interested in mechanical engineering, what are some courses potentially at Sandberg they could be looking into or taking That's or experiencing? One of the I regret. I didn't know that there was engineering courses back then. I was mm. always just like, I have to take this class, this class, this class. And I regret not taking an engineering classes. I would say, I don't know which ones you guys offer, but even a mechanics or something that you're using your hands and creating stuff just to get that idea of what you would do. Because everyone's always like, oh, math, science, but there's so much more to it. We're learning. We just had a class on thermodynamics, and that was a great class. I learned a lot that practical and making connections with energy and potential energy and kinetic energy, mm -hmm. so all that stuff. So that was very nice to learn. Yeah, we are lucky. We're such a big school. We do offer things, especially like CAD in the CAD world. We have a lot exactly. of drafting in that that will definitely benefit, and we have computer science classes too. So mm -hmm. that's a good plug for those programs. So thanks for kind of bringing yeah. that up. That's always course, nice to yeah. hear. But with that being said, um, I really appreciate your time. And again, you are an oppressive young adult and I'm excited to watch you kill it. I just want to remind everybody how connected the world is and that I just randomly ran across you on LinkedIn, looked at your profile and was like, I, I remembered you, but I never had you, but I was always impressed and that your resume speaks for itself and your drive that you just never know who you're going to run into that can make an impact on you or you can make on them. So I really do appreciate your time and it is a small world because of, of the, course, I know. the internet we work small into. World. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. If there's yeah. any more questions, people could reach out to me. I really like Sandberg. I had a good high school experience. So I'm always happy to help.
Well, thank you so much, Morgan. And if any of my students reach out, I'll be happy to make that connection in case they do have any further questions. But thanks for representing the Eagle family so well. Of course. Best of luck with your virtual internship as we all navigate through these. But uh, again, I, I look forward to watching online uh, you, all of your successes. You are such an impressive young human. So thanks for representing. But thank I hope you, you have much. an entirely wonderful day. And I will you un well. record.